The story of Bioshock begins in the year 1960. You play as Jack, a passenger of a plane flying across the Atlantic. For unknown reason, your plane suddenly crashed in the middle of the ocean. Being the only survivor, you swim towards the nearest safe haven you could see, a lighthouse. When you enter the lighthouse, you're instantly met with the weirdly ominous quote, No gods or kings, only man. Eventually, you find your way down and enter a bathysphere. And from here, the bathysphere submerges in the water. And the recording of a man named Andrew Ryan delivers his iconic monologue. I am Andrew Ryan. Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? No, says the man in Washington. It belongs to the poor. No, says the man in the Vatican. It belongs to God. No, says the man in Moscow. It belongs to everyone. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose rapture. A city where the artist would not fear the censor, where the scientist would not The beautiful display of rapture catches you in awe, and as you are caught in the spectacle of the view, the bathosphere enters the city, and the first thing you witness is a man getting stabbed to death. This is the very first moment where your expectation is subverted. From outside, the city was gorgeous, truly a work of art and innovation. But inside, it couldn't be farther from the truth. So what happened? What is this place? What happened to its people? Who are the big daddies and why are they protecting the little sister? Who is Andrew Ryan? The questions only grew as you made your way through the underwater city of Rapture. More and more crazy people, called Splicers, began chasing you. Throughout this mess, a mysterious figure by the name of Atlas began communicating with you using the radio that you carry. Atlas helps you survive by giving you specific instructions on what to do in certain situations. He eventually explained that he was separated from his family and asked for your help in rescuing them. Obviously, you offered to help if it meant getting out of this place. You come across a woman named Bridget Tenenbaum. Tenenbaum was previously a part of Rapture's elite. Before Rapture turned into a dumpster fire, she was a renowned scientist who discovered a biochemical substance called Adam. Adam has the ability to rewrite genetic material. Eventually, Tenenbaum's discovery of Adam brought about the Age of Enlightenment in Rapture. Plasmids were heavily commercialized, and since there was no regulation on Adam, every single citizen had access to it. Unfortunately, Adam was extremely addictive. Everybody wanted it, and everybody needed it. Rapture could not provide the skyrocket demand for Adam, so it didn't take long before people started developing side effects that eventually turned them into rapidly Adam-addicted splicers. In an effort to mitigate the problem, Tenenbaum and another scientist named Yi Su Chong started performing unethical experiments. They used orphan children to transform young girls into little sisters. Their main job is to extract Adam from dead people. However, this also meant that they would be primary target for splicers because of the large amount of Adam that they carry. This is when Su Chong developed the Big Daddy, whose only job is to protect the little sisters. Back in the game, you are given two choices. Harvest the little sisters or save them. Eventually, you encounter many oppositions, such as Dr. Steinman, a wild surgeon that tortures his patients, Peach Wilkins, a smuggler who was a former subordinate of notorious crime boss Frank Fontaine, who declared war with Andrew Ryan and then died in a shootout, and Sander Cohen, a leading figure in arts and entertainment's industry. In between these encounters is when you reach the place where Atlas's wife and kids were hiding. However, it didn't take long for the splicers to catch up, and in the middle of the commotion, The submarine that was holding Atlas's family exploded, killing them in the process. Following this event, Atlas was furious. He wanted justice and swore revenge. This is when he tells you to find and kill Andrew Ryan. You eventually head for Ryan's lair, the Rapture Central Control, where you come across a big spectacle, a stack of photos and papers with the phrase, would you kindly. It's a puzzling sight for sure, but you decide to go on when suddenly you are confronted by the man behind the city. The founder of Rapture, Andrew Ryan. He revealed a big twist. You think you have memories. A farm. A family. An airplane. A crash. And then this place. Was there really a family? Did that airplane crash? Or was it hijacked? Forced down? 
forced down by something less than a man, something bred to sleepwalk through life until they are activated by a simple phrase spoken by their kindly master. It turns out that Atlas was actually controlling you all this time, using the phrase "Would you kindly?" Head to Ryan's office and kill the son of a bitch. Andrew confirms our suspicions, in which he reveals that most actions that led us to this point was never really our choice. Ryan used the phrase "Would you kindly?" to order you into killing him. Kill. It didn't end well for him. Shortly after Ryan's death, you hand over the control of Rapture to Atlas, and this is when the mask was taken off. Atlas showed his true identity. He revealed himself to be Frank Fontaine all this time. Remember the crime leader that supposedly died in a shootout in 1958? Well, he actually survived and has since lived under the persona of Atlas. And now that Frank Fontaine seized control of all of Rapture, he no longer needed Jack, and so. Jack was left to die until Tannenbaum and her little sisters help him escape through the vent system. When you wake up, you find yourself in a secret lair where Tannenbaum and her little sisters took shelter, hidden away from the war. She had removed conditioned speech responses from your body. Eventually, you put on the big daddy suit and start chasing Frank Fontaine. But when you caught up, you were already a bit too late, as he had already juiced himself with Adam, essentially becoming a powerful Renaissance man. After an intense battle, you eventually prevail with the help of Little Sisters as they extract the juice out of his body. After this, you get two different endings based on the choices you made in the game. If you chose to save the Little Sisters, you get the good ending where you escape the city and adopt the Little Sisters. You give them a life and you have a family until the end. If you choose to harvest the Little Sisters, you turn evil and take control of Rapture, essentially becoming the new Frank Fontaine, and you somehow declare war on the surface world. Now, these are two entirely different endings, and it is based on the only choice you make in the entire game. You see, throughout Bioshock, every single action you made was never really your choice, as you were merely following orders from Atlas. The hijacking of the plane, navigating through Rapture, killing Andrew Ryan. The only time that you were able to make your own decision, the only time you were able to choose as a man rather than a slave. Was when the fate of the little sisters was at your hands. Even though these were the only choices you were able to make, it shows the crucial importance of these small choices in the grand scheme of things. This becomes more glaringly important once you realize that for the most part of the game, you were not even a man, at least in the eyes of Andrew Ryan. You see, the sole purpose why he made Rapture was to create a society where man can indulge in their own self-interest. Everything has been made for this very purpose: to pull the chains of industry where no god or government can dictate otherwise. In Ryan's philosophy, only man can recognize, realize, and eventually pursue their own self-interest. And in your case, was when you were given the choice of harvesting or saving the little sisters. Which do you value more, power or family? The philosophy of valuing self-interest and the importance of the individual was espoused into the concept of philosophy called objectivism by the author Ayn Rand, who, by the way, was the inspiration behind the character of Andrew Ryan. Objectivism was the main theme of Bioshock. The concept was first expressed by Rand in her written works *The Fountainhead* and *Atlas Shrugged*. The second one being a major inspiration to the game, being set in the same dystopian setting. And some other inspirations. Rand described objectivism as the concept of man as a heroic being, with his own happiness as the moral purpose of his life, with productive achievement as his noblest activity, and reason as his only absolute. I say that man is entitled to his own happiness, and that he must achieve it himself, but that he cannot demand that others give up their lives to make him happy, I'm and right. nor should he wish. To sacrifice himself for the happiness of others, I hold that man should have self-esteem. In the philosophy of objectivism, the concept of spiritual pursuit is irrelevant, and that human beings have direct contact with reality through our sense perception. The physical world and how we make it is all that ever matters. Trivial things such as fate do not matter. What matters are the concept formation, logic, and intellectual endeavor. The only thing that people should pursue is their own happiness and self-interest. And according to Rand, the only social system consistent with this morality is one that displays full respect for individual rights. These very same tenets are what inspired Andrew Ryan to create Rapture. No religion or higher power would be able to seize control of the people's interests. 
technical breakthroughs and discoveries skyrocket because ethics have been thrown out the window for the sake of intellectual pursuit. Everyone was serving themselves. Individual rights were the first priority. So, all systemic rules and regulation that kept the population in check was abolished. And since Adam wasn't regulated, people could just easily grab gene-altering substances from vending machines. These led to an addiction crisis that drove people crazy and eventually the downfall of the underwater society. Rapture failed in becoming a utopia by rejecting the systemic anchors that regulated people and the spiritual pursuits that give purpose to a lot of individuals. In Ryan's attempt to run away from a fascist world he eagerly despised, Rapture ended up becoming a lawless, dystopian city that was no different from a miserable, totalitarian society. So what does this mean? Does it mean that it's better to build a fascist, hyper-religious society that has a tight grip on its people rather than a community devoid of regulations and spiritual pursuits? Or does the answer lie somewhere in the middle? The game's exploration of the concept of self-interest and determinism was genius. It was able to capture the effects of a society that practiced a belief on an opposite philosophical extreme. And with the Bioshock series, we were able to learn that in reality, we shouldn't look at war as a clash between black and white, but instead a power struggle between different shades of gray. It may seem like one side is the oppressed and the other is the oppressor, but in reality, both sides either have their own selfish agendas or their cause mutated into misguided violence. Bioshock is a narrative masterpiece. Unless you deeply analyze what the game was actually about, you might never even notice all the nuanced topics that were discussed in the form of game content. I mean, I wouldn't blame you. The game design is chef's kiss. Although I find it interesting, the concept of choice in the game was a bit surface level, and the developers didn't fully explore the topic until Bioshock Infinite. The Bioshock series never had a miss. All of the games have their own profound essays. The fourth Bioshock is already in the works, and I can only hope that it holds up to the other three, and hopefully, it produces new concepts, and maybe a new place. Maybe in space? You know what? Oh wait.